It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not even about us. It's about legacy. It's about what we choose to leave behind for future generations. And that's why for the next year, and for the first time since 1974, the best and brightest men and women of nations and corporations the world over will pool their resources, share their collective vision to leave behind a brighter future. It's not about us. Therefore, what I'm saying, if I'm saying anything, is welcome back. The work of a single organization, the Syndicate, a rogue nation trained to do what we do, imbued with a new sense of purpose. The Syndicate, you say? Yes, sir. That's what he calls it. Down, Mr. Bunn. Where's Clay? Well, well, well. A British agent in love with a Russian agent. Detente indeed. Both crews aboard, sir. Missile unload completed. Now your curiosity can be satisfied. Hey, you got a point there, all right? My boss is paying for this trip, and, uh, well, it's 90% business. You're deluded, Mr. Bunn. I'm not interested in extortion. I intend to change the face of history by creating a world. Maybe I am the seeing illusions type. You have certainly been persistent. There's no horse or a gun left in this town. They have already been given their targets. 
At 12 noon, they will have reached firing positions. Within minutes, New York and Moscow will cease to exist. Global destruction will follow. The new era will begin. First time I've ever seen it happen. Who do you think you're fooling? Today, civilization, as we know it, is corrupt and decadent. Inevitably, it will destroy itself. I'm merely accelerating the process. Open bow doors, Captain. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to meet one of America's truly great golfers. Here he comes. Sir, would you come out here, please? Hello there. Hey, are you, are you really a golfer? No, I'm your Avon representative. Well, what, what, is, what is your name? My name is Sidney Khrushchev. And uh, well, what is your handicap? My name. Hey, I understand yesterday you just missed a hole in one. Yeah, by five strokes. <laughs> However, you played at the, uh, the Beverly Hills Country Club. Uh, how did you like the greens? Oh, they're very nice people. <laughs> well, uh, do you, uh, you, you wear uh, golf shoes? No, I have long toenails. <laughs> Hey, I, I understand that you have a gimmick that will lower uh, any uh, golfer's score. What is it, what's it called? An eraser. <laughs> well, uh, do you, uh, you play in the 80s? Yeah, I play in the 80s, but if it gets any harder, I don't even go out. <laughs> well, what, what do you do? What do you do when you're in, uh, in a sand trap? I take out my pail and shovel, and I... <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that one before. I know, I just do it. <laughs> when well, you get a new one, discuss it with me, not these people. Right. I just do it for kicks. Well, throw in an answer. I no. <laughs> how, do you, uh, how do you get distance? How do I get distance? How do you get distance? After I hit the ball, I run backwards. <laughs> Uh, uh, do you have uh, you have a caddy? No, I have a dirty old truck. <laughs> well, what do you what do you say uh, before you hit the ball? Four. Mm -hmm. And what do you say after? You do. Hey, wait. <laughs> Listen, uh, do you have a, you have a partner? What are you, my hairdresser? <laughs> I'm talking about a, a golf partner. Oh, Cassius Clay. Well, why Cassius Clay? He's the greatest. <laughs> what, what do you think of, uh, of Nat King Cole as, as a golfer? He's the greatest golfer in the world. Nat King Cole is the greatest golfer in the world. Now, wait a minute, Marty. We've played with, with Nat, and he's a lousy golfer. You tell him I want to be on his show. <laughs> tell me something, uh... 
Tommy, uh, did you uh, did you ever shoot porn? No, but I wanted to hit him in the mouth a couple of times. Uh, did, did you ever have a, you ever have a, a, a birdie? <clears throat> no, but once I had a pussy cat. <laughs> I don't remember that one either. <laughs> well, uh, who, uh, who taught you, who taught you how to play golf? Uh, Jimmy Demer, Jack yeah. Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, and Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Where'd you learn from Elizabeth Taylor? A lot more than I learned from Jimmy Demer, Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer. And moonlight and love and romance. Let's face the music and dance. Soon we'll be without a moon. I'll have a different tune. And then there may be teardrops to shed. But while there's music and moonlight and love and romance. Welcome back to We Heart Therapy. I'm your host, Annabelle Bugatti, and I'm here with famous comedian Marty Allen, and he's going to share with us the secret to life and his youth. Marty, you're, you're almost 95. <laughs> I'm going to be 95 in March. In March. Hello there. <laughs> I'm going to be 95 in March. <laughs> and he still drives, right? You still drive? Oh, yeah. I drive my car. I love driving. I get up every morning, I do exercises. One, two, three, four. Oh, I do a lot of exercises. Right. So tell some of I our- I take vitamins. You take vitamins. Yeah. So we have some, some audience members who are some viewers who are of the older generation. And can you tell them how you've managed to stay so active for so long? Well, I enjoy life. I do a lot of shows. You still I've work. Been, I still work, and I have a, a wonderful inspiration, my wife, Karen. Oh, yeah. She's my straight lady and a marvelous singer, and we're still doing shows. Yeah. You know, we're very active in concerts, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoy entertaining. I love entertaining. And, and you still entertain, even at the age of 95. At 95, I'm still entertaining. And I love life. Mm -hmm. I enjoy music. I enjoy reading. I enjoy going around and entertaining people. And, and you have friends that you get together with, too? Yeah, I get friends. We get together every, every week. We have lunch together, and we discuss things that are happening in the news, which I'm very active in thinking about what is going on in the world. Sergeant, establish a recon post downstairs. Code red. You know what to do. Yes, sir. All right, men, you heard him. Code red, repeat. We are at code red. Recon plan, Charlie. Execute. Let's move, 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 move. Everyone in the living room, it's almost time for the presents. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This is how we find out what is in those presents. I told him to pick these up. Shouldn't they be there by now? What's taking them so long? Hey, these guys are professionals. They're the best. Come on, they're not lying down on the job. Oh. Go, go on without me. It's just go. A good soldier never leaves a man behind. <laughs> Folks, me and the boys are moving on. M moving on? You're going AWOL? We done our duty. Andy's grown up. And let's face it, when the trash bags come out, we army guys are the first to go. Trash bags? Who said anything about trash bags? It has been an honor serving with you. Good luck, folks. You're gonna need it. Teach. What's the matter? Too slow? Wildcat taught me how to box when I was just starting out. But he's still surprisingly tough for his age. Thanks for the workout. You'll learn the ropes one day, kid. Just keep them hands up. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a bad idea to eat raw eggs. What's that, Beth? You want a glass? Tiger Tonic is a wildcat trademark. Fills you with vim and vigor. Drink up. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Well, I guess I better get out of your way. I'm sure you've got a busy day of boxing lessons ahead. Ah, uh, no more sparring today. Or for the rest of the week. Seems like no one wants to knock gloves with a wild man anymore. Maybe it's good for you to have some time off. Especially after the heart scare. Again with the retirement talk? You know, my ticker's in tip-top shape. That was nothing but some heartburn. Hot sauce and a tiger tonic. There's still too much fight left in this old body for me to hang up the gloves. Now, what do you say we go crack some skulls? Get in. Do I look like I need a chauffeur? I'll take my own wheels, thanks. is a hero from a bygone era, and he's waging a war against an enemy he can't beat. Time. What's your name, scumbag? Sir, Private Brown, sir! Bullshit, from now on, you're Private Snowball. Do you like that name? Sir, yes, sir! Well, there's one thing that you won't like, Private Snowball. They don't serve fried chicken and watermelon on a daily basis in my mess hall. Sir, yes, sir! That you, Jack?
John Wayne? Is this me? Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Who's the slimy little communist shit twinkle toad cocksucker down here who just signed his own death warrant? Nobody, huh? The very fucking godmother said it. I'm fucking standing. I will PT you all until you fucking die. I'll PT you until your assholes are sucking buttermilk. Was it you, you scroungy little fuck, huh? Sir, no, sir. You little piece of shit, you look like a fucking worm. I bet it was you. Sir, no, sir. Sir, I said it, sir. Well, no shit. What have we got here? A fucking comedian, private joker. I admire your honesty. Hell, I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. You little scumbag. I got your name. I got your ass. You will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Now get up. Get on your feet. You had best unfuck yourself or I will unscrew your head and shit down your neck. How tall are you, Private? Sir, five foot nine, sir. Five foot nine. I didn't know they stacked shit that high. You trying to squeeze an inch in on me somewhere, huh? Sir, no, sir! Bullshit, it looks to me like the best part of you ran down the crack of your mama's ass and ended up as a brown stain on the mattress. I think you've been cheated. Where in hell are you from anyway, Private? Sir, Texas, sir! Holy dog shit, Texas, only steers and queers come from Texas, Private Cowboy. And you don't much look like a steer to me, so that kind of narrows it down. Do you suck dicks? Sir, no, sir! Are you a Peter Pupper? Sir, no, sir! I bet you're the kind of guy that would fuck a person in the ass and not even have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. I'll be watching you. Parents have any children that live? Sir, yes, sir! I bet they regret that. You're so ugly you could be a modern art masterpiece. What's your name, fat body? Sir, Leonard Lawrence, sir. Lawrence, Lawrence, what, of Arabia? Sir, no, sir. That name sounds like royalty. Are you royalty? Sir, no, sir. Do you suck dicks? Sir, no, sir. Bullshit, I'll bet you could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. Sir, no, sir. I don't like the name Lawrence. Only faggots and sailors are called Lawrence. From now on, you're Gomer Pyle. Sir, yes, sir. Do you think I'm cute, Private Pyle? Do you think I'm funny? Sir, no, sir. Then wipe that disgusting grin off your face. Sir, yes, sir. Well, any fucking time, sweetheart. Sir, I'm trying, sir. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds. Exactly three fucking seconds to wipe that stupid-looking grin off your face or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Sir, I can't help it, sir. Bullshit, get on your knees, scumbag. Now choke yourself. Are you through grinning? Sir, yes, sir. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sir, yes, sir. Bullshit, I still can't hear you. Sounds off like you've got a pair. Sir, yes, sir. That's enough. Get on your feet. Well, shoulder. Private Powell, what are you trying to do to my beloved car? Sir, I don't know, sir. You are dumb, Private Powell, but do you expect me to believe that you don't know left from right? Sir, no, sir. Then you did that on purpose. You want to be different. Sir, no, sir. What side was that, Private Pyle? Sir, left side, sir. Are you sure, Private Pyle? Sir, yes, sir. What side was that, Private Pyle? Sir, right side, sir. Don't fuck with me again, Pyle. Pick up your fucking cover. Tonight, your pukes will sleep with your rifle. You will give your rifle a girl's name. Because this is the only pussy you people are going to get. I was afraid to meet you. You are so horrible in that movie. Oh, I'm a, I'm a piece of cake. You're yeah, awful. I'm a nice person. No, but is that realistic? <laughs> I mean, was that even possible that anybody could be so sadistic and offline? Yes, it was. Uh, you have to kind of understand, Val, that we're sending these kids to Vietnam, okay? This guy's basically a drill instructor as an actor. Uh, nobody's that nasty. Could you imagine turning Gunnery Sergeant Hartman loose on the public? It wouldn't work, would it? But was there anybody like that? I mean, there are people in the Marines who were that? I'm afraid that there were the occasional, there was the occasional individual that would take it upon himself to, to use a little physical force. It was not condoned by the United States Marine Corps. Physical nor verbal abuse was, is, is not now and was not then condoned by the Marine Corps. But it's like the speed limit in the United States. I don't know what it is here, but it's 65 miles an hour. When I'm driving 65 miles an hour, I got cars whizzing past me and 
but it's the individual. It's certainly not the state that, that allows people to go 80 miles an hour either, you see. So we, in some cases, we have these individuals that seem to want, think that they can take it upon themselves to do things and get by with it. And Hartman was one of those people, and it did go on. Tell me, you know, you were in Vietnam. Is this realistic? I mean, when you look at the movie, is that... It's very realistic. I have a cross-section. When, when somebody hires me to do technical advice, I, I like technical advice because I like putting the realism in there. It's, it's good for me. Why? Good therapy, I yeah. think, maybe. But uh, I have a little black book, and it's, I go on to a film to do technical advice. I call, I've got 50 Vietnam veterans at, at the touch of a phone that I call. I go through the script, and I go through each and every scene, and I make little asterisks. Then I get on the phone, and I start calling. I'm talking veterans from New York, clear to Washington State, Seattle, down to uh, Florida. I've, I've got a cross-section of farmers mm -hmm. and bankers. But when you look at it, I mean, does it ring true with you? Is it hard for you to watch? Because you don't even like uh, talking about your experiences in Vietnam. It's, it's really not that difficult for me to watch because I know it's not, it's not something that directly uh, that I was involved with, okay? Uh, I, I don't see the face of my friend, or I, I don't have any problem with this. Uh, but realism is there, and, and you can take a, a circle of ten Vietnam vets, give them, each, give them a situation, and they'll have ten different ways to solve the problem. So, what's real, you know? What's your wound? Hey, Rick. Here. Look at this. This place. It's beautiful. It is something, isn't it? Everything Maggie's lost. Rip. Maybe if I tried harder, done things different, listened more. I, my girl, she's strong. And my grandson, he'll only make her stronger. You ain't got to worry about her. I need to find my family. I need to keep them together. No, you don't. You only think you do. I know it's been hard. It has. What you wanted for me, for Carl, it hasn't been easy. We've been trying. But we'll get there, all of us. I'm tired, Herschel. My family. Maybe I can find them here. No, Rick. I've attended Comic Cons, but I have no idea what it's like behind the scenes to be one of the celebrity guests at one of these things. If you do a play, you get an immediate response to what you're doing. And this is kind of the late audience response because the fans have seen you and they come to see you to acknowledge you, mm -hmm. you know, your work and it's, it's all good. Well, I mean, Herschel, you know, the character of Herschel on The Walking Dead went through quite a journey. What was it about him, sort of going through all the, the steps that he went through, that made him fun for you to play? One thing about Herschel, he, he at one time maybe was not as beloved as he became, but one thing, he always stood up for what he believed in, and it was never something that was taking advantage of other people. 
it was kind of fun to play someone that was a person of conviction and who would stand up for what he believed in. So that was, it was, a, it was fun to do that. Mm -hmm. Now he did ultimately reach his end. Um, we've mm -hmm. heard that I guess there's a tradition among cast members that when a character dies there's a, a ritual of the actors having a death dinner. Did you have yeah, one of those? We did, yeah. So what was that like? It was fun, people throwing up. and. <laughs> 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 no, no, they were really grieving. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It, it, it was fun. And the, the morning of the, 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 my last day, the, the uh, all of the cast and the people from the, the uh, front office and everyone came down. They were all wearing Herschel suspenders and, you know, dressed up like Herschel. And it was really quite moving that, that uh, everyone felt so inclined to do that. Is there some way that Herschel could come back, like in a flashback or a dream mm -hmm. sequence? I, I would love to see Herschel again. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to hold mine. I mean, it's it's it would be fun, but I don't I don't see it happening. But but it was fun while it did last. Yeah. So obviously yeah. you you've been involved in a number of quality projects, but The Walking yeah. Dead just seems to have this this. It has it resonates. You know? It's life. Yeah. But and you're right because it's on a lot. There's often marathons and that kind of thing. So people see Herschel hmm. frequently. Life got interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had a good career, you know, and I was happy, and then all of a sudden, bang, it got interesting. <laughs> I, I mean, things, things, uh, and and dead men walking helped that. Isn't it time to do a romantic comedy? I'm I'm for that. <laughs> I'm totally for that. I'm ready for whatever they throw at me.